So we've got a cubic function here. The graph of g of x, as sketched below, has unknown variables b, c, and d, a is equal to 1. The graph of g intersects the x-axis at negative 5 and 0, and at p. p's coordinates are unknown, as well as the y-axis at 0 and 20. p and r, so p here, and r, they are the turning points, the stationary points of g. So question 9.1.1, as expected, determine the equation of our cubic function. So this is the standard form of our cubic function. So there are two forms. First is standard form, and the second is going to be x-intercept form. And this is what it looks like. Now, if you're familiar with your parabola, your parabola also has its standard form, so ax squared plus bx plus c. It's got its turning point form with p and q, and it's also got an x-intercept form here. But with your parabola, guys, there are just two x-intercepts. With our cubic function, there's three in theory. But we do get circumstances where with a cubic function, a cube, something raised to the power of three, only has two x-intercepts. And we call that a repeated factor. So when a graph turns on the x-axis, we call that a repeated factor. That means we repeat one of the brackets as well. So that means we take out one of these brackets, I'm gonna erase that, remove it completely, and we square one of the brackets, we repeat it. And the repeated factor is gonna be p. Okay, our other x-intercept is at negative 5. So if we plug in a negative 5, it's x minus minus 5. The two negatives would create a positive, And that is simply going to be x plus 5. Close the bracket. Open another bracket. And yeah, we can just keep that as x minus x2 squared. Okay. But now we need to solve. We need to solve for x. But we need to sub in a value here for our y. And how exactly do we do that? Well, we have a random point here. Our y-intercept is also doubling here as a random point. So we sub in x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 20. So we sub in y here, x is equal to 0, and this is what it looks like. And if we just simplify it once more, 20 equals 0 plus 5 is just going to be 5, open a bracket, 0 minus x2, look, it's, we're just going to keep x2, that is going to be our second x-intercept, close the bracket, squared, divide both sides by 5, 20 divided by 5 is equal to 4, and this x2 squared is just going to remain. And remember, keep your variables on the left-hand side, okay? It's just more mathematically accurate. It makes your examiner a bit happier, you know, they start like high-fiving each other in the examination centers, you know, everyone starts going wild. No, I'm joking, it's really not like that. Okay, and in order to get your sec second x-intercept, we square root both sides, and we have x2 plus minus 4. So the root of 4 is 2, but is it a positive 2 or a negative 2? It's definitely positive because p is on the positive x-axis, so it's going to be a positive 2. And we can sub this 2 in right here. Then we expand, and it'll give us the standard form of a cubic function. And that is pretty much it for the question. So let's do that. Okay, and this is what it looks like. Keep simplifying it, foil out your brackets. And last step, one of my grade eights, one of my private students, so I, I tutor one-on-one -on -one as well, likes to call it the rainbow method. Oh, how cute, like you see, it makes like a little rainbow. So x times x squared x times negative 4x, x times plus 4, it's, it makes a little rainbow. Yeah, you know, they're, they're in grade 8, they, they haven't dealt with calculus yet, so they're, they're still loving math. I mean, come on, come on, calculus isn't that bad now, is it? Um, but yeah, anyway, this would simplify to x cubed plus x squared minus 16x plus 20. So a is equal to 1, we already knew that. b is also equal to 1, that invisible 1 that's here c is equal to negative 16, and d is equal to positive 20. And that is it for the question.